Hello world, this is Eric Trobel coming to you with my first animation tip tutorial video. This topic was voted on by my wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for subscribing and voting. In the interest of being concise, the editing and topics may be a little bit rapid fire, so I encourage you to replay the bits that may have gone by too fast. Let's get started. Topic one is workspace. I've reset my workspace so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Do note, I normally work with a three monitor setup. I'm recording everything on one monitor for the purposes of this tutorial, but I do recommend at least two monitors for animating. Third monitor is handy as well, but not as necessary. Some of the equipment I use and recommend are a desk mirror, tripod. This one is cheap, well-made, and works with any sized phone. If you have a laptop, a laptop stand is very recommended. This one's great. If you need a laptop, this laptop's great. A desk riser slash monitor risers are very much needed, so you can not be sitting all day. And finally, I recommend at least one of these monitors. It can be rotated horizontally or vertically. First things first, I like to remove some of the clutter, or at least move it to my second monitor away from all the action. Some of these guys down here, the helpline, uh, I like to tear off pull over to my other window. No, they're still visible to me, but they are no longer taking up so much vertical space here on my main window, as well as this guy here. This is used a little bit more than those guys, so I like to just tear it off and put it vertically where it takes up less space. This can get a little weird to navigate, so do note that you can just click on this guy up here and get to any of your categories. For instance, I'm just hanging out on custom, and here are my apps. You can also bring this over to your other monitor. Normally I have my graph editor and my picker on my second monitor, but for the purposes of this, I will just bring them up as needed. As far as the Maya panel layout goes, I like to keep it to the four windows. This is a bit cluttered for some, but I really prefer it because I think it's important that you have as many views as you're animating as possible. I'm a big proponent of perfect pose structure in 360, and this is even more important in the game's animation world. Having several windows up at once allows you to do this pretty easily without getting stuck in one view. Um, so the way I like to do it is I have my shot camera, render camera, whatever you want to call it. I always have a top orthographic view up here, and then I have two perspective views. This is my sort of main one that I tumble around in, and then I have one that's sort of more for a side view. It's, it's basically meant to counter at 90 degrees whatever I'm looking at in this one. So if I've set this camera up like this, I know this needs to be like this. Conversely, if I, if I move it like this, I know that 90 degrees away from that is now something like this. This way you can ensure that your pose is clean from all angles, that you're not just locked off animating to one angle. The outliner is also a super important tool for animators to use. Needing it frequently to check for various things in the scene, usually props and constraints. Um, so I usually leave it docked uh, here. Once your workstation setup is how you like it, you should go up here to workspace and save it. Drobal time two. Last step for your workspace is lock it. Um, you've probably gotten into scenarios where you've accidentally clicked on the, something, dragging it away forever and uh, getting lost. So this makes sure that you can't accidentally tear things off. Since we're in the business of working with other creative human beings, people will take over your file, need to open it and understand what they're looking at. It's good to name everything in a somewhat comprehensible way. For viz layers here, I like to color code everything because it makes it much easier to see at a very quick glance what you're dealing with uh, to turn on and off. Um, for the animation layers, I'm not really concerned with naming them as much because I'm usually merging them down at a certain point. However, if there are animation layers that are going to be hanging around for a long time or forever, then I'm definitely naming them. Before we jump into scene setup, I want to take a quick look at Maya setup, mostly through the Maya preferences here. We'll just go down the list. Um, nothing I really change in these guys. However, once you get to this one in, I believe, Maya 2020 or beyond, you can finally change the font size down here for the uh, UI to be bigger. Watch it happen. Boop. Not much bigger, but it's definitely helpful. As far as what these things are, you can go to display, heads up display, 
and I always like to make sure my frame rate is on as well as my current frame. Frame rate is good so you can make sure you're getting as fast a speed as possible and then current frame is just you always need it for reviews. Back to preferences. I do spend some time working with the evaluation settings. If you're finding your, your rig is going slow, um, it, it does help to play with this. That's a whole nother video for another day. Now for tangents, I prefer to keep all of my tangents weighted. That way I have more control over them as well as starting them off with auto tangents in and out. Um, now when I'm blocking, I will switch this to steps, but otherwise I'm in auto. For do go to files projects. Maya has a really weird native browser. If you click on OS native here and then you go to file open, bam, now you have your Windows browser complete with uh, bookmarks um, and you won't have to deal with Maya's weird browser. Also in files projects, it's worth taking a look at this autosave uh, column here. And by default, it's off. You can turn it on. I don't like to let it save for me. I like to click on prompt before save. And what this will do is you can set the timing. Uh, so every 30 minutes now, it will ask me if I want to save. I don't want it to save automatically because I don't want it to interrupt what I'm doing. So that's why I put this prompt on. And then I'll hit cancel when the prompt comes up and I'll save on my own terms. But this is just a nice way to remind yourself every 30 minutes. Do come to the sound tab here. Click repeat on hold and then click on this three. What this does is when you have audio, you can middle mouse drag and hold and you'll hear the sound that comes out of that frame over and over and over. It's, it's invaluable for dialogue. Gotta have it. Now in your time slider tab, I spend a lot of time, particularly here, so much time that I actually have a hotkey that lets me go back and forth between play every frame and play for me, it's 30 frames a second. It could be 24, whatever your project is set at. Going back and forth between these two allows you to hear the audio, assuming that it's not slowing down, at least close to real time. In this case, my real time is 30 frames a second. I have my frames per second counter up, showing me that I'm not really hitting that. And the reason being is because I have all four windows playing at the same time. This is useful, uh, but I don't always want to work this way because it's more important to me that I'm getting instant playback. Here in the time slider preferences, you can update the view to just the active view and, and it's having no problem now hitting the mark of 30 frames per second. This is another thing I like to toggle pretty frequently. So I have a hotkey set to eight and nine to toggle my viewports. Undo, you want to make sure it's on infinite. I believe that's default, but uh, in older versions of Maya, it is not. Other important setup type things in other windows, if you're in Maya 2020 or above, uh, you want to go to your animation menu and key. Go to your set key option box. You want to click on this guy. This makes hitting S to key your control work like the insert key function. That means it doesn't change the curve. I'm not sure why this isn't on by default. Prior versions of Maya don't even have it. I should also note that I'm often using the Isolate Select tool to help differentiate between the two uh, perspective views, as well as give me new information like hiding hair uh, and clothes will help me see the body better. Let's talk about scene setup. There's a handful of things that I do for every shot I'm assigned. Step one is planning and reference. I am always at least uh, doing thumbnails, if not taking video reference to help inform my animation. What's really important for me though is bringing my reference inside of Maya as an image plane. I used to reference my work on another monitor, but having your reference inside of Maya, if not directly behind your character, is so much more powerful. It allows you to be much more accurate. I'll do another video someday about recording reference, editing reference, as well as being able to edit your reference inside the graph editor. As I said before, it's very important to set up your viz layers. So for all of my perspective cameras, I like to set the focal length higher so that the character isn't distorting as I tumble around them. Um, so you can do that by selecting your camera, going over here to focal length and putting it to 150, maybe 200, somewhere in that range. What this does is it makes it behave much more like an orthographic view. You will need to set the near clip plane to something like one to three. Um, that gets rid of all the weird clipping artifacts. Now, 
as I tumble around her, she's not distorting. I can see much more clearly her pose structure, if she's balanced, how her weight is, no distortion happening. Um, this is great for working with the body, great for working with the face. I prefer it for just about everything. I also like to come down here to the, your display options. Uh, by default, your overscan is set to 1.3. Setting this to 1.1 will still give you some border the pan zoom tool is very handy. You just need to hold down the backslash button, usually under your backspace key. Uh, hold it down and then right click to zoom in and zoom out and pan. This keeps your camera values stationary. So you can do this on your locked shot camera and it won't change anything. But you get to zoom in and have a lot more increased fidelity with your movements as well as posing your character better. Click backslash to engage it, hold it to manipulate it as you right click, zoom in and zoom out, and then click it again to turn it off. To actually reset it, you need to go to your select your camera, go to your 2D pan zoom tab, make sure it's on, and then you just put these values at zero. That one goes at one. While we're on the topic of pressing buttons on the keyboard, I will real quick run through my hotkeys. For more information as well as the scripts themselves, check the description. My V key toggles on and off the control curves. As I mentioned, I'm hitting spacebar to toggle the panel view often. Alt B is a native Maya hotkey that I'm often pressing to toggle the background color. As I've already mentioned, my A key toggles between playing every frame and playing real time. My 8 key and 9 key toggle between playing all panels at once versus playing one panel. There's the standard 4, 5, 6 views for your shading modes. Q, W, E, and R for your different tools. Even though I have auto key on, I will still use S to set keys, noting that by having a channel selected in your channel box, S will only key that channel. I've set my G key to reset the control to zero, which I'm using constantly. I've set my tilde key to delete keys, which is much easier than having to go all the way to the right side of my keyboard to delete. I've entirely removed the Control X cut hotkey from Maya, so I don't accidentally press it. And I would only accidentally press it when trying to undo with Control Z. I'm hitting F to zoom all the time in Maya's viewport, as well as the graph editor. Speaking of the graph editor, I have some hotkeys for just the graph editor here. I've changed Control S to be my new insert keys tool. I have my tilde key set up to delete keys in the graph editor as well. I'm pressing 1, 2, and 3 in the graph editor to switch between absolute, stacked, and normalized view. I've set up hotkeys to adjust my tangents in the graph editor. I've got B to break tangent weights, V to free tangent weights, N to set to weighted tangents, C to set the tangents to linear, Z to set them back to stepped, X to flatten them, and D to auto them, which I'm hitting quite often. I've also set up a few hotkeys through Animbot. Control Q for blending to neighbors 100% left, and Control E for blending to neighbors 100% right. Real quick overview of my tools. Anim School Picker is a great free utility for creating your GUI pickers. Studio Library is an excellent tool that allows you to create poses for your character, save them in a library fashion, as well as save out and load animated clips. Using this tool is a must if you're going to be doing a lot of dialogue, you'll want to set up your phonemes and expressions and things like that. Anabot's the only Maya tool I use that's not free, but trust me, it's worth it. It's about $100 for a year subscription. The tool deserves its own video because it's so chock full of features, but I will really quickly run through the ones I use the most. In fact, I've hidden a lot of the buttons that I just don't use. I'll use the nudge tool for when I need really finite movement. I use the ease out slider all the time because look, that's beautiful. I use the push pull slider. I use the simplify bake slider. I use the smooth unsmooth when I'm working with dense keys. And I'll usually keep these green sliders visible while I have all the yellow sliders visible. I'll use the tween slider. I use blend to default quite frequently. I use the blend to frame slider pretty frequently. You can set it to a frame on the other side of your timeline to blend to. I'm using blend to neighbors all the time. I've used blend to undo like once or twice. And then some of these duplicate sliders are useful because they are blend to world space sliders, useful when doing a walk cycle to keep feet in place. Moving along, I definitely use this guy to set up my own custom buttons and groups. I will use the select opposite button occasionally if I'm feeling lazy. I use mirror pose very frequently. 
I'll use align objects if I'm creating a locator or something and I want it to have the same positioning that another object has. I still need to learn all about the XForm relationship tool. I hear it's super powerful. It's on my to-do list. I use the temporary pivot tool all the time, particularly with props. Micro manipulator is very helpful for when your rig isn't set up in the most helpful fashion. I use the motion trail all the time. Um, and I recommend you check out the spacing temperature, which colors it based on how drastic the spacing is changing. I'll use the stop viewport tool every now and again for when your rig is really slow. And then I use the bookmark tool all the time for when you have multiple shots in one file. I don't really use the auto save feature in Atombot because it's been buggy for me in the past. I like to turn off show tooltips because I've learned them and they kind of get in the way. And that's it for Atombot. As far as other tools go, I recommend an online note app. I use Evernote.com. It's good to have it online so you can access it from any device. For editing your reference videos, I recommend DaVinci Resolve. It's free and it's awesome and it's uh, it rivals Adobe Premiere. Look, I'm using it to edit this video right now.